When it comes to understanding the differences between the Muslim and Arab world post 9-11 and the short-sighted governments in both the US and the UK and their perceptions of them, there are few working harder or more passionately to introduce Western civilization and culture in the ways of the Arab world than our next guest, Ahmed Tharwat. As I travel through the US and arrive at a port of entry like Washington, Dallas or JFK, I'm angered to see so many men of Middle Eastern descent redlined and pulled from the queue. They're forced to sit and are interrogated at length. Many then miss their connecting flights because of this treatment, yet the U.S. Republican-led House does nothing to investigate white supremacist hate groups or militias arming themselves to the teeth in the wake of President Obama, Obama's new gun proposals. A native Egyptian, Ahmed has traveled back to his birth home of Egypt extensively from his current home in Minneapolis, Minnesota. He's been an enormous supporter of U.S. House Democrat Keith Ellison, who has appeared before numerous witch hunt committees on Capitol Hill to help members of the opposition party understand that not all brown-skinned Muslim men pose a threat to the U.S. Indeed, most of them do not. He tells stories of constituents who have served in the U.S. military and how several of the police and firefighters who perished on 9-11 were themselves Muslim. Now, Ahmed has a wonderful public television show that I watch on his YouTube channel because he, the award-winning journalist that he is, strives to gain a deeper understanding of the issue. Now, this Friday is the second anniversary of the hashtag Jan25, January 25th. That's the day that started the flame that burned across Egypt for 18 riveting days and ended with the resignation of Hosni Mubarak on the 11th of February. As the anniversary of the revolution approached and all of the things that have happened in terms of a new parliament being formed, the uh, rise of President Morsi through the election, the trial of Hosni Mubarak, now soon to be a retrial, I wanted to speak with Ahmed about where Egypt is today. Is the retrial of Mubarak considered good news or bad? How will women fare, fare, fare in the long run there in Egypt? And what does he see for the coming year and indeed years? It's all coming up in a lengthy but fascinating interview. Keep it right here on Worldview with Dennis Campbell.